It turns out that the blue light from screens does have an impact on sleep. So there's a great study done by Harvard Medical School by some colleagues there. And they showed that reading for an hour on an iPad just before bed, relative to just reading a book in dim light, firstly, it delayed the time with which people fell asleep. So it took them a lot longer to fall asleep. Second, it reduced the total amount of sleep that they had. Third, it decreased a sleep-related hormone called melatonin. It delayed the release of that melatonin and it reduced the amount of melatonin. And finally, it reduced the amount of rapid eye movement sleep. So it had significantly, significantly the melatonin point. How, how yeah. significantly? So it delayed the release by about somewhere between ninety minutes to two hours across the individuals. So in other words, your brain wasn't. So what melatonin does? It's a. It's called the hormone of darkness or the vampire hormone, just because not be, because it makes you want to bite into people's necks, but because it signals to your brain that it's nighttime, that it's darkness. And so your brain needs the signal of melatonin for it to understand when is it dark. In other words, it needs to understand by way of melatonin when it is time to fall asleep. And when you're bathed in electric light at night, and especially when you're getting blue light from these devices, your brain is fooled into thinking it's still daytime. And when there is light emitting through your retina coming into your brain, it signals to a part of your brain to hit the brakes on melatonin and your brain will not release melatonin. So what was happening with this iPad reading is that you were artificially telling the brain it's still daytime and the brakes on melatonin were still shut on. And so melatonin was not starting to be released until much later. And what was also interesting about that study, by the way, is that when they stopped the iPad reading, the sleep disrupted pattern continued for several days later. Oh, In other words, it was almost like a drug that it had a washout period that was a blast radius to it. Now, there's been some great work by a wonderful sleep scientist in uh, Australia, uh, Michael Gradazar, and he has added to this story. And he said, it's not just the blue light. These devices, the principal function of these devices is that they are attention capture devices. Just like you said, I'm just going to have a wee little TikTok before bed. They are in the attention economy. And all they care about is capturing your attention for current currency. And they make a lot of money from it. What that attention does is that it stimulates your brain. And when your brain is stimulated, it's very difficult for you to fall asleep. And it creates what we call sleep procrastination where you're lying in bed and you could be perfectly sleepy and you could fall asleep right now. But then you sort of check social media and you think, oh, I'll just shoot that last email. Oh, and then I'll order that last thing on sort of, you know, Amazon. Uh, and then you get a text back from your friend and you start texting them. And, and then you look up and it's now an hour later and you're an hour deficient on sleep. So it's the activation of your cerebral cortex by these devices that is perhaps the more harmful aspect of them regarding your sleep. Now, here again, I don't want to be finger wagging. You know, the genie of technology is out the bottle and it's not going back in any time soon. There's nothing that I'm going to say as a sleep researcher that's going to change that. I don't take my phone into my bedroom. I put my phone uh, out in the kitchen and I don't uh, see it until morning, but lots of people do and fair enough. There's another rule uh, that I've stolen from another friend called Michael Grandner, who's uh, here in America at the University um, of uh, Tucson in Arizona. He has this great rule regarding technology, and it's the following, that if you really must take your phone into your bedroom, you can only use it standing up. And what you'll find is that after about six or seven minutes standing up, you think, I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit down on the bed. And at that point, as soon as your backside hits the bed, you're done. You've got to put the phone away. I think it's a great rule of thumb if, uh, if you need to take technology in the bedroom. Um, I'm going to apply that.